My name's uh, Professor Ian King and I'm the pro a Professor of Serial Genomics um, in the School of Biosciences at uh, Sutton Bonington. And my area of expertise is transferring genetic variation for important traits into wheat from its wild relatives. We've just won a BBSRC grant to um, transfer genetic variation from the wild relatives of wheat into wheat. And, and the reason for this is that the world's population is increasing in size for something between about 6 to 7 billion to 9 billion by the years 2040, 2050. And the problem is, is that to actually be able to cope with this population increase, to actually be able to feed them, we need to be able to increase our present food production by about 70%. Increasing yield is absolutely critical to feed the world, but at the same time as that we're having this need to increase food production, um, climate change, such as temperature increase, will have a negative effect on yield. We'll be pushing it down. So at the same time as we're trying to increase yield, climate change will be pushing it down. And the work that we've received from BBSRC is to help to increase yield to feed the extra, um, extra population, but also to combat these effects of climate change. How do you do that? Well, essentially what we do is we, we, we take a plant, I mean, this, is, this is wheat, and wheat has both the male and the female um, parts in it. So essentially what you do is each of these, uh, 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 this morphology of the plant here are, are florets. So they each contain a potential of producing a wheat seed, and it contains both the male and the female parts. So essentially what we do is we remove the anthers, the male parts from each of the plants, from, from each of the florets from here, so there's no more male parts left. And then we go back to the um, wild relatives and take the anthers, the male parts of them, and use those to pollinate wheat, and in that way we can produce hybrids. I'm Dr Julie King, um, and my area of expertise is plant molecular genetics. Um, over the last few years in grass, but now transferring what we've learnt and been doing on the grass into wheat as well. We have the wild relatives of wheat, which we are hybridising with wheat, with the aim of producing hybrids with just small chromosome segments of the um, relatives. And a, a large part of my role will be tracking those segments using a lot of the molecular techniques, such as genetic markers, sequencing technology, um, to see how large the segments are, what segments, and so on. It's using genetic variation that is already available in the wild relatives of wheat um, and transferring that variation in using natural systems that would occur naturally. Um, maybe speeding it up slightly by bringing the relatives and the wheat together to do it. Um, um, and then using just sort of fairly standard laboratory techniques in order to track how the chromosomes have intermingled or which parts have transferred in and everything. You have to have the phenotypic knowledge. You have to be able to look at plants to decide which characteristics you actually want. We will produce new hybrids within the first few years and then those hybrids will be examined by other members of the research consortium within the UK over the first few years of the project and those plants will also be sent out around the world like Australia, India, Mexico, China where they will also analyse the material. Um, and we should know within the first three to four years of the programme or certainly first two to three years of the programme which plants are really useful. Um, major results where we can actually start putting things into the field for the actual farmers will be around, you know, about the five to six to seven year mark. So it's quite a long-term project, but the benefits are such that, you know, this kind of work is very important.